Hey everyone, my name is Steven Augustus. I'm head of open source at Cisco. I'm also one of the Kubernetes project uh, leads for SIG release. Uh, today we're going to be chatting with you about Kubernetes project updates, uh, one of our favorite projects in the world, right? Uh, so if you have uh, ever joined me for a presentation, uh, you know that I value deeply uh, the human component of open source projects. And, uh, and Kubernetes is, is a project that is near and dear to my heart. So in every one of these presentations, I always want to talk about the human component a little bit. Now, if you have, uh, if you have read Kubernetes press in the past, uh, you will know that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of our spokespeople, uh, if you will, um, like to talk about uh, project maturity and and Kubernetes becoming boring. Uh, and I think we're I, I think we're moving steadily towards that point. Now I'm going to practice a few numbers with you: um, 22, 38, 34. 42, I like that one, and 51. Um, so, okay, practice is over. Why did I choose those numbers? Uh, so if we look back into uh, the release cycles, uh, going, back, uh, going back from 117, uh, those are the numbers of enhancements that were landed for each cycle. So if you're familiar uh, with the project, you know that enhancements are our are, are are, are, uh, designation for, for features, uh, really. An enhancement is meant to, uh, an enhancement is a designation for a set of work that spans across multiple release cycles, right? So it's not, it's not easy to encompass uh, the entire scope of a feature in, in a single cycle. Often it takes multiple cycles for uh, a, a feature uh, or a set of features, uh, components, to move from alpha to beta to, to GA or stable. Uh, so enhancements is, is kind of that bucket that we put um, uh, all, of those, all of those components or, or the, a set of components that would be uh, delivered within a release or a set of releases. Now. So again, one more time with those numbers. 22 for uh, Kubernetes 117, 38 for Kubernetes 118, 34 for Kubernetes 119, 42 for Kubernetes 120, and 51 for Kubernetes 121. Now, with those numbers, you can kind of see an upward trend, right? We're kind of we're kind of going up, up and to the right, roughly, you know, with the uh, with the exception of uh, of of the difference between uh, Kubernetes 118 and 119, um, we're trending we're trending upwards, right? And that's 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 nice to see uh, in, in terms of enhancement delivery, uh, especially the the number of enhancements going uh, being graduated or deprecated. We're looking at like. 13 uh, from, uh, from uh, Kubernetes 121. Now, the reason I mention these numbers is it very much so has to do with the evolution of process, right? And I think that we're, we're approaching a point in the, in the project where we have, we have kind of iterated over different approaches for several different things. And we're starting to find a fit. We're starting to find a lot of things that work for us. We're starting to find a lot of uh, different ways in crafting conversations uh, to be more effective, to, to increase the reach of those conversations. Um, so the first one, uh, if you were hanging out with us for, uh, for KubeCon NA Virtual in 2020, I talked about the release cadence, um, and again, the human component of the Kubernetes project. Now in 119, we slowed down the Kubernetes release cadence, or we elongated the, the, one, the 119 cycle, right? That was kind of a special case. 
And following that, uh, following that choice, this was kind of like the peak of, of um, you know, uh, of uh, COVID nineteen, uh, as well as uh, protests across uh, across the world. And uh, we we thought that it would would make a lot of sense to give everyone uh, the time and space that they needed to really uh, process to be able to do good work. Uh, so we extended we extended that release cycle after many many discussions. Now what followed were uh, were several questions about would that be the new release cycle? Is is now that we've extended now that we've elongated that cycle, um, it it effectively moved uh, 2020 from the standard four releases a year down to three releases a year, and we got several questions is three releases a year going to be the new norm? Uh, so when I chatted with y'all last, uh, we said, we're going to wait. We're going to see. We're going to get lots of feedback from people. We're, we're not going to move on this decision until we feel that we have, ha we have had an opportunity to chat with a bunch of different people and, and get their takes and, and kind of incorporate that feedback into a proposal. Right. So if you, uh, the Kubernetes enhancement proposals are uh, CAPS, as they're affectionately called. Uh, so the uh, so SIG release, along with SIG architecture and SIG testing, uh, produced a uh, proposal for uh, changing the release cadence. Uh, and we recently landed that proposal uh, during the, the 120 or towards the tail end of the 120 release cycle. Uh, so that means that uh, if you have not heard the news yet, that Kubernetes is officially, after much discussion, uh, moving to a, a release cycle of three releases for the year. So it's roughly 15 week release cycles with some breaks in between, um, some breaks that we try to, uh, try to have considerations around KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, as well as uh, holidays across the world. Um, and, and what that allows us to do is to, to take time to, to spend, uh, spend some effort in areas that, uh, that at times can, can often be overlooked, right? Uh, um, areas like, like product management, pro uh, product program, pr uh, project management, uh, being able to do triage on active, uh, on, on active issues and PRs, being able to bring more uh, contributors to your respective SIGs or sub projects, um, and and give them give them opportunities that may uh, may not have existed in certain areas um, around triage around the the product program project management um, and and definitely not to be forgotten the uh, uh, time to uh, improve tests improve test coverage fix flaky tests have discussions around uh, the proposals. Uh, the, the level of, of, of effort that's required and the uh, the amount of commit that SIGs are going to 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 to, um, to have for uh, for the next cycle, right? So overall, I think that um, we are we're fairly confident in uh, this being a quality of life improvement for everyone who uh, both contributes, cr contributes to Kubernetes as well as those who consume Kubernetes. So thank you uh, to everyone who was involved in those discussions. Um, they're incredibly thoughtful discussions. Um, we took quite a bit of, of time to, to, to ship this because we wanted to make sure we had those discussions. Um, so as a result of this, this um, I wanna go back to those numbers really quickly, right? So we're looking at 34, 42, and 51, right? Uh, those are the numbers again for Kubernetes 119, uh, the enhancements for 119, for 120, and for 121. Uh, so already um, there is a there's a net gain in terms of uh, in terms of the, the the enhancements that we're able to deliver with. Uh, with an extended, uh, slightly extended release cycle, right? We're really going from we're really going from about 
a three month or quarterly cadence into a, a roughly four month or, or 15 week uh, cadence. Um, so very happy uh, to see that, very excited to, to see all of the people who have been pushing that forward, uh, in, including um, the including all of the SIG sub project owners, enhancements, uh, enhancements owners, uh, the release team, and uh, the wider community for com communicating this message um, out to uh, to downstream consumers as well. Um, so, as part of uh, as part of some of the process changes that we've been going through in the project, uh, we've also we've also started to talk about an opt in process for the releases. And I think the opt in process has also had a, a, a positive effect on the uh, on the amount of enhancements that we're we're able to deliver for a cycle. So what opt in is is um, Almost as as the name implies, uh, for a SIG to uh, to sign up for the release cycle, essentially, they have to tell the release team what they're planning on committing to, um, and that that turns the uh, release team model uh, for the enhancement sub team of the release team from a kind of a uh, pull model into uh, pushing information out from uh, the SIGs into the release team. Uh, so we've, we've seen some success with that. Uh, we have, uh, as a project, uh, SIG testing has worked on uh, the removal of Bazel uh, within the Kubernetes Kubernetes repo. Uh, that is a huge uh, quality of life improvement for contributors, especially if you consider, uh, especially if you consider uh, new contributors or, or um, contributors that are just recently getting engaged with the project, uh, having to learn a new framework uh, essentially for for doing work. Um, you know, when you may be used to say using make files or or uh, you know your handy dandy uh, shell scripts. Um, so. I, I believe that you know the the year plus of work that it that it took to put together that proposal as well as execute on it from uh, SIG testing uh, has a huge quality of life improvement for for the project. So hat tip to them. Um, the community meetings are back. Uh, we have been we have changed cadence. Uh, you know during during 2020 and, and moving into 2021, we've brought the community meetings back. The community meetings are going to be a more lively forum uh, for discussion. Uh, there will be discussions around enhancements, discussions around what's happening in the community, what, what you need to be aware of, different ways for you to get involved. Um, so I think, so I'm very happy to see uh, the community meetings coming back. Those are, uh, you know, those were one of my ingress points when I was getting started with Kubernetes. So I, I hope that they are as fulfilling uh, to new contributors and to uh, ongoing contributors as they were to me when I was starting out. Um, so with 121, uh, with, with 121, with uh, 120, uh, We've had some interesting deprecations happen. Uh, so within previous cycles, we deprecated Docker shim. And you may be aware that that, that uh, led to some interesting discussions kind of across the community, across the internet. Just to be clear, deprecating Docker shim is not deprecating Docker. Uh, uh, Docker shim is a component that allows us to interact uh, with uh, containers within uh, the Kubernetes ecosystem. Um, it, is, uh, it is something that is widely discussed on uh, blogs and explained in great detail. Do not worry, um, we have your back there uh, and there is time to uh, make adjustments as needed in, in your running clusters or your clusters to be upgraded. Uh, in addition to the Docker shim deprecation, we also have uh, pod security policies have been deprecated. Uh, pod security policies have been in uh, it, it have been in Kubernetes since near inception. It's one of the first features or enhancements introduced into the project, um, and we're moving on. We're moving on. We have deprecated uh, pod security policies in favor of um, in favor of some uh, new functionality, and we will see. Um, so the deprecation window has started uh, during the 121 cycle. 
um, and we'll see pod security policies fully deprecated within uh, by 125. Now, a uh, few other uh, very interesting things that have, have happened um, kind of around communicating. Uh, the uh, steering committee has started to do, or we're continuing to do now, uh, annual reports for SIGs. So annual re reports, we uh, piloted the annual report program within uh, for working groups, and now for 2021, we're reflecting as a community on all of the work that our SIGs have done uh, really across the year, and we'll continue to do that every year. Um, so very excited to see that work happen. Um, as, you know, as, as someone who doesn't necessarily get to touch every SIG, um, it's great to be able to go back and, and read information about all of the, uh, the great work that other SIGs have been doing. Um, asynchronous communications is another thing that has, has been huge, um, especially as we, we look at our, our global situation. 121 was the first time that we had, uh, that we had a release team lead who was based in uh, APAC, and that has led to uh, that has led to a lot of rethinking of all the processes that we kind of we have within the release team, um, and I think and I think has has uh, encouraged uh, discussion around asynchronous communications, kind of across the community. So hat tip to everyone who is involved in uh, improving our processes, um, and and making them more uh, friendly for our global community. So we have uh, wrapping up lots of interesting things that have happened across the last few cycles. Structured logging is now in beta. Uh, pod resource metrics are, 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 are now active. Uh, being able to defend against logging secrets via static analysis. Uh, for, so hat tip to SIG instrumentation. Cron jobs are now stable. Cron jobs have been in beta since 1.8. They're now stable as of 1.21. IPv4, IPv6 dual stack uh, support has gone to beta, which means it's on by default. Uh, graceful node shutdowns are now in beta. Persistent volume health metrics are now in alpha. Lots of fun things to check out in the community, but unfortunately, that's all the time we have. So when you have a chance, check out the annual reports, check out the rundown on May 13th uh, for the 121 release. Um, and check out the uh, Kubernetes community repo to get more information on how to get involved in Kubernetes. Thanks for your time.